Dennis Gage here, Mad Stash Edition. We're in Evansville, Indiana today with a killer Pantera and the insane guy that built this. This is a cool little piece and you're, you're hand forming all of this, right? Hand forming all of this. This guy's smart, he's really smart. This car's amazing, this cat's amazing. This one, we were driving it last year and it started smoking. So I thought, well, what do you do when you got a car that's smoking and you pull the body off? Take it. Of course you do. <laughs> this is gonna be a blast. Let's check this baby out. You know, I, I love Panteras, but I really love this Pantera. <laughs> this thing is so cool. And uh, I mean, this is sort of the, this is the Gary Walker edition Pantera, right? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is you, this is all, this is all you and all your engineering and your design and it's all pretty crazy. But uh, this already had some mods on it when uh, you bought it. It was actually what, a, a HAL? Yeah, what? it was a HAL GT5 conversion. And, and that was a company uh, in California that, mm -hmm. that would take your Pantera and do all this stuff to it, or they, kind of like Baldwin Motion, they, they would sell you the parts and you could do it? Right. So was it all like the flares was part of that package? and The flares, the uh, air dam was fiberglass. It has a steel part down the side and then the flares in the rear. The interior was all part of the package, and sometimes you can get an engine package with it, and sometimes you can get some reinforcement to the suspension for it. So you, you found it, already kind of done in how, but you didn't like how it was done. Yeah, it needed some attention. It needed some attention. So so what all did you do? <laughs> I mean, it's more like what didn't you do on this car? Well, right? everything I touched, it needed something. You know, everything. So it yeah. just, it went from one extreme to the other. A lot of the stuff that you can't see is stuff you did too. I mean, you've re-engineered all sorts of stuff in this. Well, it started at the front because yeah. all the air went under the car. Yeah. And at high speeds, that can actually promote lift. So I wanted the air to come out, but I didn't want it to look like a GT40. So I laid the radiator down and then I built this ductwork in here to replace the area that I cut out. And instead of making this open like a GT40, I put the, the grill in and yeah. then I made a stainless piece. That looks like it's adjustable. It is adjustable. It'll go up and down if you want more flow from the radiator. It had a fiberglass dam on it. It did. That wasn't good enough. I started looking at the design of the air dam and I can see each individual component in there. And I thought, you know, I might be able to make that. So I tried. I, I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it. Out of but what? Aluminum. Out of aluminum. So, I mean, English wheel? Uh, there was no English wheel in this. Maybe some pounding over a, a, an acetylene tank or a <laughs> gas tank. But, <laughs> I don't uh, know if pounding over an acetylene <laughs> tank is all that good an idea. <laughs> seemed to work. Uh, and then the individual pieces were welded down and ground down. It was a little bit more like woodworking. This, I had a piece of wood. I bucked the roundness out of here. I had a buck to buck these in from here. And then I had holes where tabs went through here, and then this was all welded on, and I had ends welded on. And then on the other air dam, I actually made a, a template where I can get the shape, make sure the shape was right. How long did that take? Yeah, a couple months. Really? And these headlights used to, I mean, are pop up. They had a single controller yeah, originally, right? The front of the car used to be up here, and that part's no longer there. And it had a bar that came through here with a motor in there that moved the headlights up and down. Uh, but since I cut all that out, I ended up going to a linear actuator on each side. And you've engineered all this too, right? Yeah, the hood's uh, out of aluminum. Wow, it's really clean. What do you got under here? What's hiding under there? When I did the electrical system, I knew that I might be making changes to the car and I wanted to be able to make changes. And I didn't want to deal with the electrical system that was under the dash. Quick and, access. And this is your radiator, which you've but canted forward? Canted forward. What's the brake setup? That's a CNC uh, dual master cylinder. And you know, everything's so clean. Everything, every detail. Well, I've tried to update things like this is a more common latch uh -huh. used today uh, where some of the older latches don't work as well. Now, you had to add these? I added those. Right. This was welded on. The color is what? Sunbelt brown, a Nissan color. With a lot of metal flake in it, too. Uh, especially that. in the sun. So does this car have a frame or is this unibody? It's unibody. And they're pretty much hand built almost, aren't they? Kind of, yeah, pretty much. I've also noticed this is all flush mounted. That wasn't the case. Right, the original windshield had trim package that went around it, but this is a glued in windshield and it really cleans this area up right here. Now wait a minute, isn't the tank on the other side usually? It's usually on the other side. Why is it here? Well, it just, uh, I redid so much that the tank, it it's was a natural fit. to put it on the other side uh, from where the driver is. And are these stock mirrors? What are no, those? No, these are the kind of the British sports car mirrors you'd yeah. see up on the fenders, but I drilled two holes and I mounted them. I sat in a car and realized I couldn't see out of them. <laughs> so then what'd you do? Uh, I changed the shape. I took the bowls and 3D printed a different shape. You've done a lot of this car with a 3D printer, haven't I've you? I've done a couple things with 3D printer, yeah. These uh, vents up here are 3D printed. Yeah. Uh, those little knobbies on the 
console are 3D printed, the vents down here are 3D printed. Oh really, those aren't uh, part of the package? Mm -hmm. they're, they're your own? And man, those are, some, those are some serious wheels. Yeah. What are those? They're uh, 335, 45 R15s. That's big. That's big. When you sent me the pictures of this, I think, I mean, I love the whole thing, but this interior really caught my eye. It's an interesting color, kind of a green tone to it, and it's like distressed leather. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, no, it's real neat, actually. The gold trim gauges. Mm -hmm. Those are speed hut. You know, they allow you to put a logo in the gauge, which kind of sets it off a little bit. Yeah, it does. It makes, it makes it look like it belongs there. Now, how about this back window? They all had that? They uh, Well, they had a back window, but um, I was running into trouble because with my roll bar out, if I ever want to put the roll bar back in, I got to come through the glass. Mm. So I wanted to make the back window removable. Plus, I had a few items in here I couldn't get to if I didn't take the window out. So we laser cut this plate that goes around and put holes in the glass, and I can have this glass out in five minutes. Wow. Interesting setup, too, because the steering wheel tips off over to the right. Is that coming yeah. straight at you? Yeah. It looks like a tight fit in there. <laughs> yeah, and the pedals are moved. You'll find out when you drive, the pedals are moved <laughs> off over to the right some. <laughs> You got more switches and, and knobs and stuff than you're, but you're you're a pilot. Yeah. So it's, it's this this has got a lot of kind of aeronautical influence. A to little it. bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> give me a, give me a few more switches. I want to control things. The engine, 351 Cleveland. That's what they came with, but, but that's not not no. no not anymore. So that's not a 351 Cleveland. Nope, that's a Ford 400. It's been stroked to 434. Fits nice. Yeah, the 400 is uh, very similar to the Cleveland. They have the same bore spacing. Uh, a lot of the Cleveland components fit on it. The heads are Cleveland's. The main difference is the bell housing and the engine mounts. Did you have to have a special bell housing? Have to have a special bell housing. Where'd you get that? Evidently, that bell housing doesn't exist. Uh, I see. <laughs> but a guy told me he had one, and I thought it was worth trying it. And when I bought it and I got it, it actually worked. I was kind of surprised. It, it really, it really was. It the real really deal. was the right deal. Ever break that? You got a problem? Well. Actually, now QuickTime has come out with a, a bell housing that mates the, the larger transmission mount, which would be the same as a 460, yeah. to the ZF. But the problem is it's for a GT40. The transaxle on the GT40 is flipped the other way. Oh, I see. Can you make that work? Uh, you'd have to cut the ring off and then rotate it 90 degrees and weld it back on. You know, I, but you got to get that right. I wouldn't try that. I'm sure yeah. you, you would. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> but it is a solution. Yeah, I guess so. Now, that's some extra bracing, isn't it? Yeah. Originally, it just had a single brace that came across. Yeah. And then when I did the roll bar, I welded in uh, reinforcement panels and then made the ladder bar. And then the roll bar, this part's actually removable. It goes up and ties into the roof line. Were these pretty stiff or not? Fairly stiff, but they're a little bit like an open cardboard box. So do, do, and if you do something like this, it really tightens up the whole, the whole box. So is it now pretty? It's pretty rigid. Wow. And this is how the stock Pantera would look, your transaxle, your the drive shafts, drive shafts come yeah. out there? And this used to be a rear mount on the ZF, uh, but the yeah. later models are side mounts, so I converted to a side mount. These I welded on nuts underneath, yeah. and I use those for multiple reasons, like if I ever want to make a tub for this, I can mount it from there, but I also have a steel stand that I mount in here. I can stand in here. Or if I go to a car show, I could put a display in there. Or, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, I mean, it just I just left them in there so I could use them. So what's the carburation setup? Those are Weber IDA48s. And they were just bolt-on? They would have been bolt-on a 351 Cleveland, but a 400 has an extra inch of deck, so the cylinders are further out. Yeah. One way to get around that is to do spacer plates, but spacer plates look awful. Yeah. So this is also how Pantera cast intake manifold. I cut the center section out and spread it. You did surgery on the intake? I did man. surgery on the intake. You can see where the center is gone. Yeah. And then there's just a cover plate. You've done some crazy stuff to the exhaust. What do you have back here? The original exhaust collected into a single tube that went through the suspension. And after messing with it for some time, I end up with taking all four primaries over the suspension, and they all land in this box. And the entire exhaust system is one unit, one piece. Well, for, per bank? Per bank. Wow. And then uh, back in here, I, I wanted to play with back pressure, so I have a butterfly valve in there to change the back pressure. So it's a tunable it's exhaust? It's a tunable exhaust. So you fabbed all that stuff? Yes, you, everything. Holy mackerel. Now, you, you did a bunch of messing around with the steering, too. I went to power steering. I made my own upper and lower control arms. And did you have to just throw a rack in there? Or? Well, I got a rack from uh, MG OC Spares. They yeah. make a uh, power steering conversion for the MGBs. Uh, but the problem was the distance where the rack's pivot is wrong. Okay. 
But of course, uh, the distance where the rack pivot on the stock Pantera was wrong too. Oh. It was off by <laughs> almost an inch. It was wrong from the beginning. And you get bump steer so that when the tire would go up, it'd pitch out. Oh, okay. And I knew that when I, when I did the rack, I had to get the dimensions just right. Uh, of course, a sixteenth of an inch is huge and you're not going to get it right and it, it took probably a month of trying to adjust it to get it right. So you bring it up, you let it down, you bring it up, you let yeah, it down. Yeah, you take the, you unhook the shocks and then you can run full travel up right. and down until you get the right spot. And, and then, once you get the right spot on one side, then you have to adjust the other side at the same time. And then when you got them both right, you have what? Well, when I did one of them, I knew that I might have to tweak the length of the pivot point on the rack. So I put a, a one and a quarter threaded rod yeah. so I could take it in and out so I could adjust that rack just a little bit and when I found the right length I welded it. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't taking that apart again. <laughs> man oh man, I love this car. This thing, you've done everything to this. It must be a blast to drive. What do you say we go out? Okay. All right, okay, and I can drive it right. <laughs> yeah, I can, you can drive, drive it right. right. Okay. Close that baby up. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. So we turn on the power. Right. Okay, then we turn on the ignition. The ignition. The ignition's over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And fuel pump. Then we turn on the fuel pump. Mm -hmm. Then we turn on the power steering. We wait. Yeah, we'll go and start it up first. Then okay. we'll turn on the power steering. Then starter button's over here. Mm -hmm. the clutch in. Contact. Whoa. Now the power now steering. Now the power yeah, you were definitely a pilot. <laughs> flip, 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 push, push, flip, 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 flip. <laughs> you guys love switches. <laughs> Man, that's a thunderous sound. You can do better than that. <laughs> you gotta really lay it down. <laughs> Oh, I really like this car. <laughs> oh my god. It's pretty good nature. Man, unbelievable. You definitely hear you coming in this car. Yeah, I hear you going too. <laughs> do people even know what it is? Not very often. Every now and then they do. But uh, usually their question is, <laughs> and my answer is, it's a Pantera! <laughs> and it didn't look like anything else you could buy on a showroom floor. Well, this has got some get up and go too, doesn't it? Yeah. Woo! Yeehaw! Well, with the weight of the engine toward the back tires, it, it, it plants them. The rims are Group 4 racing wheels, they're made out of magnesium. Those would have been what they had on the car when they raced in Le Mans. So now this would have had coilover springs originally? That's correct. And yeah. now you're on air for, for the... Air ride, it's actually air ride. It is air ride. I mean, you're really skimming the <laughs> tarmac here. And I've got a tank in the back and a pump. Uh, and with the tank, if I get to an area that I, I'm a little bit concerned about, I can raise the front end up to clear something and then I can take the front end back down. You've, uh, you've thought of everything, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, eventually you find you haven't thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> for cubic displacement, no. right? It wants to go, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, this 
a really cool car. I like this. I like this a lot. Well, you know, when you spend nine years doing a car, it's really nice when other people get to appreciate it, you know? I'm Dennis Cage. Happy motoring.